What would you consider as your biggest success mm. thus far, and where were you in your life when it occurred? Oh, it's an interesting story. I may have to think about that. Okay. Uh, my big, big success. Well, you know, I I wrote um, over the course of that six years. I wrote uh, a total of thirteen movies in a row for the Hallmark Channel, and it, it, what happened there was I had written a spec screenplay called The Wish List that I wrote as kind of a big romantic comedy, star-driven romantic comedy as a feature, and it didn't sell. Uh, but it was a really funny script, it was very high concept, great characters, and just at that time, this is probably, you know, 2008 maybe, 2009, um, it went to the Hallmark Channel because they were looking for romantic comedies, high concept romantic comedies, and they were kind of, this programming was shifting a little bit, and, uh, you know, if I could get it made as a TV movie, I was thrilled, you know, I just wanted Movie to be seen, this movie to be seen, movie to be made, and uh, they read it. They really liked it, and it ended up being um, being picked up by them. I rewrote it for them, rewrote it to you know sort of make it a little more Hallmark Channel friendly, um, and it was a hit. It did really well. I was very proud of it. They were very happy with it. And then I just got hired to you know over the course of the years to do to do some adaptations, to pitch original things. I had three other original screenplays that I wrote. That they ended up buying, and I ended up that I had those there were spec scripts that I ended up re repurposing for them. Um, uh, one was a, a, a holiday film called Hitch, Hitched for the Holidays, which was a, a really really fun, uh, funny uh, um, uh, sort of uh, comedy of errors, romantic comedy of errors set around the holidays, um, and that was that that was on about in 2012, I think. Um, so it was a, a really great. I mean, I, I love doing the work for them, and I'm continuing to do other things for them. And and but this run of of, of work was very. I was just you know it was really a, a really really a high point for me. You know to be able to work regularly. You know I was saying this business. If you can work and get paid fairly regularly, you're doing okay. You know I mean uh, they're going to be the people who you know make making the millions of dollars all the time, but basically. If you're working pretty regularly, you know, and getting things made, you're doing well. Um, so I was really, really proud of that. So to me, that's probably the, the ma my major accomplishment: being able to to write so many films over the course of, of a relatively short period of time. And I wrote a couple of stage plays in between, and I wrote a pilot as well in, in between that period. Um, uh, and I rewrote a, a holiday movie for uh, what was ABC Family Channel at the time during this whole this whole period. Um, so uh, you know, just being able to work regularly on a lot of things and see things made, to see as many things made as I was, I was as I was fortunate enough to see during this particular period, um, was I think a really my my favorite accomplishment and what I'm maybe most proud of. So it's interesting because it sounds like that was during the Great Recession. When well, it's very funny. Most it's, it's, people's it's, low point. Yes, in fact, you know what. <laughs> This happened shortly, at, this all started ha happening after the writer's strike was over. The writer's strike was, I think, 2007 to the beginning of 2008. And they bought that script either the end of 2008 or the beginning of 2009 um, at a time when you know, people were not working. I was working much less before the writer's strike. And then after the writer's strike, it was just accidental. It was just fluky. Um, but it is kind of ironic that you know at a time where the studios were pulling back on everything and the networks were pulling back and it took a long time for writers to sort of get back into a groove and all of that to get back to a new normal. Um, not that long after that, you know, my career really sort of hit its stride. So it's kind of interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. You know, we were just speaking briefly off camera about just how someone can be let's say, for lack of a better word, hot in one sort of genre or style of film and then struggle to find work because yeah. that's just not part of movie culture anymore. Yeah, like, um, yeah there's a shelf yeah. life, I mm -hmm. think, to, to, to um, not necessarily one's ability, but one's uh, right. purview, you know, in terms of what you write. Uh, the genres come, come and go, you know, uh, uh, you know, certainly if you write uh, superhero movies these days or, or you know, things based on graphic novels or things like that, or if you write horror or whatever this, there's always a place for that. But, but uh, because of the way the, the way the films that are made at studios now, how different it is than it used to be, you know, over the course of time, how much everything has to be either much bigger or very very star driven or comic book driven or something, uh, it's a, it's a little harder, you know, to kind of make your mark in movies than than it, than it used to be. And people who were very successful selling a lot of spec screenplays, you know, back in the day and getting high concept comedies made or whatever. They had a great run, you know, but but they but a lot of those people had to reinvent themselves or just were not able to, 
um, because of having to move into TV or something like that, which is great. I mean, TV is, you know, people say TV is where all the great stuff is being done. But, you know, you have to, you always have to reinvent yourself. You can't rest on your laurels no matter how successful you are, you know, because things can disappear very, very quickly and it may have nothing to do with you. It's just the, you know, kind of just the, the uncertainty of the business and the changes in the business and the financial changes that happen and, and all of that. So um, you have to kind of be very open to, to knowing, first of all, when you're, when you're doing something and you're successful, you have to really be grateful and really remember that this may disappear tomorrow. So enjoy every second because, you know, it, it's, it doesn't come around that often. So that's the number one thing. Um, but after that, you have to be really open to, to what else is out there and what else you can do. Um, and, uh, and that's important. Yeah, you have to have a little foresight with that, which we didn't always have to. Now things have changed a bit for that. And how do you think we can kind of get our finger on the pulse of what could be, <laughs> I mean, I, I know, you know, besides being Steve Jobs, yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, it's funny because, you know, if you come up with an, you know, if, if there's something out there in the zeitgeist right now, you know, you could say by the time you pitch it, there are 15 of those movies in production or, or seven TV pilots that have just been bought. So it's very hard to kind of, you have to kind of be a little ahead of the curve but not so far ahead of the curve that, that people don't know what you're talking about or it's too much of a jump and not right in the middle of the curve because everybody else is probably doing it. So it's hard. I mean, it's, I think it's, you know, a lot of it is just luck. You know, a lot of it is just coming up with an idea that just happens to hit and, and it's just right before so there's something out there in the world that, that's, that's going to affect it. You know, so you, you, you want to kind of be a little ahead of the curve. How you figure out how to get ahead of the curve is difficult, you know, sometimes you just, you just, there's a trend that's starting to happen or something you know about, and it doesn't have to be anything that that's, that's that esoteric. It's just like, where is the world sort of moving toward a little bit, you know? Uh, but then you don't want to be too ahead of the curve because, because it seems too risky or people don't really get it. And then if you, if you miss the curve altogether, which is very easy to do because things happen so quickly, then, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you, you just lose out. Um, but it's hard to predict. I mean, I, I, you know, they always say you should just, you should by, by and large write what you feel you can write best, what you're most passionate about, what means the most to you, and everything else sort of will fall into place. You know, you, you, you'll, it'll find its place. Um, you just have to have the patience to, you know, to, after you write it, to, to, sometimes it takes a longer time than others for things to find the place or for the, that, curve to, that curve to come back again, you know, the, the, that world to come back again, that, you know, that's right for your script.